video where I'm going to be trying out some chalk paint. So I heard about chalk paint being great to use on Ikea furniture, you know that furniture that doesn't really have real wood so it has that kind of silky smooth surface that you can't actually get other paint to stay on. So I'm going to try it out today with an old Ikea piece of furniture that I have which I'm actually sitting on right now so I'll have to show you guys in a second but it is just a stool that I bought in Ikea for super cheap and it's got some dings in it um I'm not really using it as a stool anymore even though I'm sitting on it right now but I want to try to use it as a side table next to my bed just a nightstand because I think it could look really cute there and I'm going to try chalk paint plus creating my own stencil using my brother's scan and cut so come along so here is the victim for the day. <laughs> so this stool, I mean, it was super cheap in Ikea. I used it when I was in my last apartment. You can see it's got a little ding here, but I mean, nothing that we couldn't fix if we really wanted to be using this. Um, but I'm just not really using it as a stool right now. I feel like it could actually be a really cute nightstand because it's the exact right height that I need. So we're just gonna go ahead and try to see how we can make this work. I bought this chalk paint actually on Amazon. Um, and I know a lot of people have used some other different chalk paints, but I'm gonna try this Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint. It did come in the mail a little um, like it had, I don't know, exploded a little bit, but I did check it out. It looks okay inside. So I have this beige color that I'm going to use. It's actually called oatmeal for the base. And then I'm going to use white for our stencil that we're going to make. And then I bought these brushes. I've heard that you're supposed to use special brushes for chalk paint. So we'll see how that works out. Whenever you're going to be working on anything with paint, make sure you lay something down at the bottom um, just to collect anything. I know I'm usually pretty neat, but honestly, I know this is like an old rug, but I live in a rental space, so I wanna make sure I don't get anything on anything. So I just cut up a box and put that down, and I'm gonna use that to make sure that nothing gets on any of my rugs or anything like that. After you've set up your space, make sure that you just clean down the piece of furniture that you're gonna be using. I just have this uh, multi-purpose cleaner, which is actually from Trader Joe's. I love it, it's great, it's super cheap smells really good and just is gonna wipe down this piece to get any dust or oils or anything like that off of it. So once you've cleaned off the piece of furniture, you have all your space laid out and you're ready to go, just grab your paint and I'm gonna grab this um, kind of like flat head um, brush to use. It's supposed to, be, supposed to be for chalk paint, excuse me. So we're going to see how that works out. I haven't used this paint color anywhere. I haven't used this type before. So we're just going to hope for the best. The chalk paint is super easy to paint on. It goes on really thick, it's very matte, so you don't have to worry about um, doing extra coats if you don't want to. I decided to do two coats just because I felt like with the black furniture, it was showing through a little bit, but it wasn't terrible if you just wanna put one coat on there. All right, everybody, so we are back for day two of this project. 
Um, you could definitely get this project done in one day, especially because of the size of this stool, but I wanted to make sure that these layers and coats were completely dry before I started to put the stencil on here. So it usually says you should leave about two hours between each layer or coat. Um, but like I said, I did it a little bit later in the day yesterday, so I felt like I just wanted to leave the evening um, for this to all dry and then come back this morning to get this going for the rest of the steps that we have. So during that time, I also did create my stencil. Um, this stencil itself, you can actually purchase on my store as an SVG file. If you have a Cricut or a Scan and Cut um, or any of those types of cutting instruments, you can go ahead and purchase this yourself, the SVG file, and create that file um, for your cutting machine. So what I did to do this, if you want to create your own pattern, you can absolutely do that as well. It's super easy. I got this paper on Amazon. It's just some stencil paper um, that's really light and easy to cut through on the scan and cut. Um, I'm going to make sure to link that all below so you guys can see exactly what I used. But once I um, started wanting to make my stencil, what I did was just go on to Procreate on my iPad and I just drew this little design that we have here. Um, I saved it as a PNG file, so you don't have a background on a PNG file, it's transparent. Then I brought that into Illustrator, which is an Adobe product on my computer, and I saved it as an SVG file. So um, you can create your pattern right in Illustrator, or you can create your pattern in the Canvas um, workspace that Brother has. So I'm sure Cricut has a very similar workspace. Um, once you've created that SVG file, you'll upload it to the Brother's uh, Canvas workspace or the Cricut workspace, whatever it may be, and then you will create your file that you need for the actual cutting machine. So again, if you don't wanna go through all those different steps, you can just download a stencil from my shop or you can go and find other stencils. There's a ton out there. Um, I have I've found that some of them can be kind of expensive so this was a much cheaper way to do this because this was a 12 by 12 sheet so I used a quarter of it so I'm gonna be able to get you know possibly four stencils out of each 12 by 12 sheet so much cheaper I think I paid like $14 for this whole pack of paper but I'll make sure to link that below so you guys can check that out as well base color is all painted and we have our stencil cut out. I'm going to take my next chalk paint that I got. I got a different color. Um, I got white um, and I'm going to use this uh, brush here that I have that's a little pointed at the top. I just think that it's going to be um, a little bit easier to get into some of those like grooves that you have um, and the edges for this. So you'll see this isn't obviously going to reach across the entire stool. Um, but not a big deal. We'll just move it around. I have some painters tape with me if I need that. Um, we'll see. This may be easy enough just to kind of hold, but we'll figure it out as we go. Okay, so to start out, I'm just going to place it at the corner here where I think I'm going to want this. And I feel like with this, don't get too, I don't know, worried about it being perfect. Um, I think a lot of projects are like that, just kind of go through. And like, that's the best thing about these Ikea projects too, is how much did you really pay for this piece of furniture? So if you wind up being like, oh my God, I can't stand this. Either one, you just paint over it, so it doesn't really matter. Or two, you just go get a new one if you have that ability to. Um, I'm a big one with like, I've changed things a ton of times different pieces of furniture so I'm not too concerned I'm pretty like open to trying things but I know it can sometimes be kind of scary so as you can see I've taped this down because I think I think that's going to be the move but let's see how it goes Oh, 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 oh,
Okay, so one thing I am finding with this is you definitely don't need a ton of paint on here. It actually creates, I think, more issues. And here is the final result. I'm actually really happy with it. I think there was some points during this stenciling that were a little difficult to figure out where I should place the stencil, but doing a pattern like this, it's kind of patterned, but it didn't really have to be too perfect. So I'm really happy with it. Um, you can see it does come across as like a little bit of a distressed look with the um, paint, the chalk paint. And I also only did one coat on each of these. So if you're gonna do two coats, I would say put one coat on, leave the stencil on there, and then do the next coat as well. That is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed checking out how to use the chalk paint and making your own stencils. And again, if you are interested in that stencil, you can of course always download it from my shop. I'm gonna link everything below, including the paint that I use, the paint brushes that I used, um, the stool, and the stencil, like I said. So make sure you guys check that out, and I hope that you enjoyed the video and you'll come back for more. If you're not subscribed already, make sure to do so below, like the video, and come back for more magic. Thank you guys so much for watching.